Good morning. Well, good morning. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, good afternoon. Good afternoon to uh, each and every one of you who will be listening tonight, this afternoon. It's uh, 5 o'clock, or just before actually. It's about one minute before 5 o'clock. And uh, looking forward to uh, uh, sharing with you uh, this afternoon. I, I guess something that... Um, sort of been on my heart for a little bit and um, uh, sort of ties in a little bit with what I've been sharing at Heritage Baptist Church in the last few weeks. Uh, I don't want to sound redundant, but I do, I, I do believe that uh, it, it's an important topic. And I think a lot of preachers and a lot of God's people are looking at this topic um, in the days that, that we're facing. And uh, I think it's important, but I think we need a balance as well. Uh, it's definitely we need the balance uh, of, of, of the preaching and the teaching uh, that, that needs to happen. So, um, if you get the Bible, turn to read of 1 John chapter 2. Uh, 1 John chapter 2. And um, we start there, 1 John chapter 2. And then as you find the place, I'll have a word of prayer. And then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get into it. Afternoon. So, First John chapter two. We're going to be getting verse eighteen. We're going to read some, some scripture for you. But let me have a word of prayer, and then we'll get into it. Shall we? Father in heaven, thank you so much for uh, the joy and the privilege of opening the scriptures this afternoon and uh, diving into what you have to say in the Word of God. Might we pray, Lord, for each and every one of us, uh, Lord, as we open the Bible this afternoon, that you lead us and guide us into all truth and, and help us, I pray, fill me with your spirit, fill the listener with your spirit, encourage and bless, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Alright, so we're in uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse number 18, and I'm just going to read to the end of the chapter. Little children, it is the last time, and as you have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time. As they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he that denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist, that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Let that therefore abide in you, which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye shall continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he hath promised us, even eternal life. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you. And ye need not that any, may, that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things and is true, and is no lie, and even as it has taught you, you shall abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him that is coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. Now that's a, a, a lengthy passage, but it's a very important passage, and the reason why I believe that, that it is an important passage, a reason, is that he's dealing with the last times, or in other words, the last days. And we all agree that we're in the last days, the last times. As a matter of fact, ever since Jesus ascended, it's been the last days, the end of the world. And as we continue in these last days, what, what John is saying to the people that he's writing to Basically, he's, he's writing uh, and warning these people about last day's deception. Uh, people that who uh, say that they're Christian and are not. People who say that they are followers of Christ and are not. 
And there's ways that you can determine that. Now, we live, also live in a day where people often say, well, you shouldn't judge, you shouldn't judge. Well, I'm sorry, but the book that I hold in, in my hand right here, the Bible, has already judged. It's already given us uh, the understanding of people who are false prophets, false teachers, uh, those who uh, want to creep in, and we'll look at that in the book of Jude in a moment. So in the last days, John says to those he is writing to, he says, you have heard that Antichrist shall come. But the Antichrist is going to come. Uh, uh, when he's going to come, who knows? Things are leading up to his coming? Absolutely. So he says, you've heard that Antichrist shall come. And then he says, even now are there many Antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time. So one of the indications of the last times or the last days is that there are many Antichrists. Alright, many Antichrists. Now, Christ, the Greek word Christos, means the anointed one, the anointed Messiah. Okay? The, the preposition anti means this, against, opposed, and also in place of. So what John is telling us in this little book here is that there are going to be those who come, those antichrists who come in against or opposing or in the place of the real Christ. Um, Jesus said that in Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21. Uh, as a matter of fact, hold your place in 1 John and go with me to Matthew chapter 24. And in Matthew 24, Jesus gives, a, 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 gives us a chronological uh, understanding of what shall be the sign of his coming in the end of the world. If you go to Matthew 24, and if you have a look uh, in verse number 23, he says, Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not, for there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Alright, so even Jesus tells us uh, in the, uh, the message there in Matthew 24 that the last days, the last time is going to have the indication of people who are going to rise up in opposition to, against, or in the place of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now we know ultimately that that is the Antichrist. That's his ultimate goal. Uh, to stand in the place of and to oppose everything that has to do with the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, but what we're also dealing with here is a spirit of Antichrist that is in the world. Go to 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. Verse 1, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. Notice that. Wherefore ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. So that spirit is already here. Verse 4, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God, he that knoweth God heareth us, and he that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So we see here that this spirit of Antichrist is already in the world. This spirit that is against, or this spirit that opposes. All right, first and foremost, I believe that we see that, no doubt, in the world today. No doubt at all. And even in Australia, uh, we see that spirit, I believe, rampant. Uh, a spirit that opposes. Uh, you know, most people are, are, are obeying the government and closing their churches down and, and, you know, maybe the jury is still out whether we should do that or not. I hate the thought of it. I hate doing it. I, I'd rather be in church, to be honest with you. Uh, but I just feel that, that this spirit of Antichrist is really gaining momentum 
in preparation for the Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the wicked one, who will reveal himself at the right time. So we know that it is the last days because there are many Antichrists. Now notice, notice uh, uh, this, this characteristic of this spirit, the spirit of Antichrist. Verse 22, who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whoso denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father, but he that acknowledges the Son hath the Father. Denial, denying. Um, why is this important? Well, you've got to remember that back in John's day and back in the day of the apostles and, 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 and so forth, and even when Jesus walked the earth, don't forget that it wasn't just Romans who denied that Jesus was the Son of God. It wasn't just the Romans who denied that he was the Christ. The Jews also denied that he was the Messiah. The Jews denied that he was the Christ, the Son of the living God. So that is a spirit of Antichrist, and that spirit is still in the world today. As a matter of fact, there are many Gentiles who do not believe that Jesus is the Christ. And by the way, folks, let me just say this, there are many Jews who also do not believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah. They still reject him as the one sent from God the Father to be the saviour of Israel. They still reject that. So we've got this opposition now against Christ that John's writing about and, and he's defending. This, this folks, is what we call apologetics. He is defending the faith. And all of us need to defend the faith. And all of us need to make sure we're doing the right thing. So we've got this denial. Go over with me, if you would, to the book of Jude. The book of Jude, which we would often... Uh, referred to as the book of apostasy, a great falling away. And I have no issue with that. I do believe that it is a book full of apostasy. Now, you have to understand something, that these, these ones that have this spirit of antichrist, they do creep in. Right? And I said this during the week. They Look, the internet is a wonderful tool. All right? The internet, everyone, Facebook Live or YouTube Live, uploading it, You've got so much out there to choose from. A lot of good stuff on the internet, but there's also a lot of rubbish out there too. So the way today, in 2020, with everything that's going on, our way that these false prophets that have this spirit of antichrist, the way that they are going to come into your life and into your home is exactly through what you're doing now. You say, oh, what have you got? What's it? Well, yeah, you've got to, we'll get to this in a minute, but you've got to be discerning. All right, you've got to be discerning. I'll give you an illustration in a moment. But have a look at verse number four, Jude verse four. He says, For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our Lord, sorry, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. Now look at this, and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Now let me just say this they're not going to come in straight off the bat and say to you, well, I, I deny, I deny, I deny that Jesus is the Christ, I deny that, 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 you know, that he's not the Lord Jesus Christ. They're not going to say that straight away, they're going to wait. They're going to wait. So they're going to creep in. Now, let me just say this, all right, and I want to be careful how, how I say this, all right. There was a post put on, put on Facebook this morning, and the post was in regards to a guy by the name of Rodney Howard Brown. Now, Rodney Howard Brown is one of those word of faith preachers. Uh, he was the one that the Assemblies of God really magnified in the 90s about this laughing in the spirit and barking and all of that sort of carry on back in the day. So this post was put up, this quote was put up by a, a, an independent Baptist guy. He put this quote up there and... Um, you know, off it goes. So I, I tried to find the quote. I was looking around, and and uh, it was to do with the end times. And I went on there, and I was I was listening to this message. All right, that Rodney Howard Brown was preaching about the end times. And here's now here's the thing. They all start off by reading the Bible. They make some comments, but then this is what happened. He talks about a dream that he had. And he says, in that dream, the Lord Jesus 
this place did about a number of different things. And one of the things that he said was, apparently the Lord Jesus said to Rodney that what's happening in the world today, the Lord is sifting the wheat from the tares. And that's in reference to Matthew 13. But here's the thing, if you don't know the Bible and rightly divide the word of truth, when you look at Matthew 13 and the interpretation of the wheat, the sorrow of the tares, the wheat and the tares, you know that's dealing with the end of the times and uh, dealing with the last day, or last of the last days. It's, it's not now. Right? It's not happening now. Because when you look at the chronological order back in Matthew 13, and then you go to Revelation 14, the saints are taken out first in what we call the rapture, our gathering together, and then the tares are bundled up, if you please, and thrown into the furnace. Right? That's how you can tell false prophets. Because they do not rightly divide the word of truth. They, they have extra, if you please, biblical revelation. And so that is a way that these people creep in and, and you listen to them and they oh, well, they sound really good. But listen carefully. Listen carefully. Like I said before, this Bible, my King James Bible, is a, is a book that helps me to discern the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. It helps me discern right from wrong. If anyone preaches anything or says anything that goes contrary to this book, then I'm not going to have anything to do with them. And neither should you. But that's your decision. And notice also in the book of Jude, if you're still there, look at this, because uh, back in um, back in 1 John, let me just pick that up, 1 John, just back a few pages. You don't have to go back there if you want to. Listen, listen to this. He says this. Uh, this is the promise that he had promised us, even eternal life. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. Them that seduce you. There was a, uh, there was a church in Revelation. And that church was the church of Thyatira. And he, Jesus said this about the church, verse 20, chapter 2, verse 20. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which caused herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and eat things sacrificed unto idols. So, let me, let me just say this. When Jesus said commit fornication, he's not talking about the physical sexual nature. He's talking, talking about fornicating spiritually, going after other gods, going after other things, right? And to eat things sacrificed unto idols. So this, this woman, Jezebel, which calls herself a prophetess, she comes in and seduces. You know, this is why as independent Baptists we believe what the Bible says about not having women preaching. Because we understand, not that men are perfect, that women are not perfect either, but one of the things that ladies have a, a great ability in doing is seducing. So these people come in and they seduce. Now look at verse, go to Jude, look at verse number 19. He says, these are they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit. Having not the spirit. Notice the word sensual. Those who are seducing. Very carnal, fleshly. Appeasing the flesh. Those who preach that we're under grace and because we're under grace we can do whatever we please. No, 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 no. Grace, listen, grace is not a license to sin. Grace is the ability of God in our life for salvation, for service, for strength, for ability. And by the way, grace has boundaries. Alright? We all are, we live in boundaries now, we've got restrictions. Right? Isn't that amazing how that there are most people in the world who really don't have an issue with the boundaries that Prime Minister Scott Morrison is putting upon us, but when a preacher gets up and he preaches the word, he preaches it straight and he preaches it right and he preaches the boundaries that we have, a lot of Christians kick up about that. And they call the man of God a legalist. It's very interesting. But the seduction, the sensuality that comes 
in these last days. Folks, you've got to be very careful. Well, what do we do about that? Well, let's go back to uh, the first John chapter 2. Uh, the Holy Spirit of God, and I mentioned in the morning message about the importance of the Holy Spirit of God dwelling in us and empowering us. And when you got saved and received Christ as your Saviour, you were uh, uh, the Holy Spirit come and lived inside of you. Right? Come and took up residence. Now, have a look at this. And by the way, before I get into that, let me, let me just say a verse that is quite often taken out of context. Verse 19, They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Folks, let me just say this. That's in, that's in, that's in context with the Antichrists, that spirit. It's not dealing with a brother or sister who assembled with you for a length of time and then decided to go to another church. Another church perhaps of like faith and practice. And I've heard it, I've heard it many times. Oh, well, they left. Well, if they had been of us, they would have stayed with us, but because they left us, they're not of us. Well, it's out of context. Let's, let's stick with context. All right, let's stick with context. Look at in this passage how that John mentions the Holy Ghost. Look at verse number 20. He says, But you have an unction from the Holy Ghost, or the Holy One, sorry, and ye know all things. All right, verse 20. But the anointing, sorry, verse 27. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you, but the same anointing teacheth you all things and is true, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. So here we see the working of the Holy Ghost in the life of the individual. Now let, let's just clarify some things. We all need preachers and teachers. All right? But when he says, you, you, but the anointing which you receive abides in you, and you need not that any man teach you, he's not saying that you don't need... Uh, you, you, he's not saying you don't need to pastor. He's not saying you don't need to Bible class teacher or anything like that. What he's saying is this, is that the Holy Spirit that anointed you is in you and he reveals to you the truth. So if you're listening to somebody and, and the Spirit of God is setting up warning lights and bells are going off because of something you heard like I did today, then, then that's the Spirit of God warning you and saying, hey, listen, you better stop listening to this person. All right? Folks, we, we need to have a sensitivity to the Spirit of God in our life. Now, one of the things that I really believe uh, that we need, if you turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, dealing with the gifts of the Spirit, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and uh, thank the Lord for the gifts that He's given us through the Holy Spirit, and uh, they are... They are Given to every man to profit with all, verse number set, verse number seven, verse eight. For the one is given by the Spirit, word of wisdom; to another, the word of knowledge by the same Spirit; to another, faith by the same Spirit; to another, the gifts of healing by the same Spirit; to another, working of miracles; to another, prophecy. Now listen to this: to another, discerning of spirits. All right, discerning of spirits. It's not the gift of discernment. The gift of discerning of spirits. It's the spirit in you working and giving you the ability to discern the spirit that's in the other individual. All right? Remember in uh, 1 John 4, it says, try or test the spirits and see whether they're of Christ. And even Jesus told uh, a number of folks in, in the churches there in Revelation, those seven churches, he said, uh, you know, you, you, you put to the test uh, these false apostles and so on and so forth. And Jesus was pleased that they did that. And a, a way that we are not going to be seduced and uh, we're going to hold these, uh, uh, these, these, the spirit of Antichrist from creeping into our lives and homes and churches is by allowing the, the spirit of God to operate in, in an individuals in a church or home or whatever, the discerning of spirits, all right, to discern. Oftentimes Jesus perceived in his spirit. And it's very similar. And, and we too, through the Holy Spirit, ought to discern or we ought to, we ought to perceive in our spirit whether, whether what somebody says is true or not. Remember that spirit of truth and the spirit of error. All right, so we've got to understand that. So we've got the working of the Holy Ghost in our life, which is really, really important. Let me close with this in 1 John, if you want to go back there, 1 John chapter 2. Uh, 
because he deals with uh, uh, the coming of the Lord, verse number 28, he says, And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear... Now, when is he going to appear? He's going to appear in the cloud. It says that all through the Scripture, that Jesus is going to appear in the clouds, and when he comes in the clouds, we're going to be caught up together with him. What a day that's going to be. That's an amazing day. But it says this, that we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of God. So we don't want to be ashamed of his coming. We want to make sure that when Christ comes back, that we've done all that we have that, that we could do uh, through, the, through the scriptures and, and, and not allow this spirit of antichrist to come in and seduce. Now, you've heard, as he said, that antichrist shall come. But he's not been revealed. But there are many antichrists. And that spirit of Antichrist denies the Lord Jesus Christ. And by the way, can I just say this? Uh, this, is, this is just me now. To deny the Lord Jesus Christ, to deny his sonship, to, to deny that he's the saviour, to deny the Lord Jesus Christ for me is to deny everything about the Lord Jesus Christ. Including his body, which is his church. So let's, let's be careful when it comes to this spirit of Antichrist that is here. And uh, let's, let's be in the Word, as I said this morning, let's be discerning and let's be very careful about what's taking place. You have heard, Antichrist shall come. Yeah, he's coming. But he's got four runners. Alright? Don't be deceived. Let's close through the Word. Today. Father, we love you. We thank you for your goodness and blessing to us. Thank you for the truth of your word. May God bless each and every listener. And thank you for the privilege of opening the word of God and preaching or teaching from it tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you so much for joining me today. Joining me this morning and for this afternoon. And Lord willing, uh, in days to come, each day I'll, uh, I'll do a little devotion, just a little thought uh, with, with what the Lord gives me uh, each morning. Uh, maybe tomorrow I might look at nation rising against nation, which is very, which I was thinking about that, which is um, very interesting. But anyway, God bless you. Have a great night, and we'll see you throughout the week. God bless.